Hello, I'm Tim Cockrell from Wiser Media, and I'm here with uh, Frank Lehman from the uh, Federal ICT um, ministry. ministry of Belgium, yep. which you call FEDICT, as I understand. That's Welcome, right. and thanks Thank for, for, calling, for um, joining me. Um, interested to hear about the latest developments in the Belgium, Belgian EID and how this is expanding into creating more sort of inter-government citizen relations. Well, uh, we have already quite some history with ICT and, well, with EID uh, in Belgium. Uh, actually, the ID started in 2001, uh, where uh, government uh, decided to create a dedicated ministry for ICT, and our first task was to issue a Belgian national identity so card on a new technology, some years. and that was a smart card. So, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, in, in, in all these years, uh, well, we managed to distribute an identity card to every Belgian citizen above the age of 12, which is a mandatory card. Uh, but afterwards, we also decided to issue uh, kids' IDs, which is for the children under 12, which is more on a voluntary basis. And we also issued uh, a foreign residence card. Okay, just to uh, pick up on the, the children's IDs, what are they sort of used for? Well, uh, let me give you the example of what I see at home. I have two children, they are 15 and 17. Uh, they go on internet, very often, I must say. Uh, they surf on websites. Uh, well, now they are a bit more grown up, but uh, when they were 9 or 10, they, they were surfing on websites that sometimes were not meant for children. So uh, one, one of the ideas uh, we had with this kid's idea is to give them an access tool that allows children to go to dedicated children websites. Meaning, if you're not a child, you're not allowed to get in. Oh, so, okay. so it's, it's like a closed user sense. group uh, access uh, tool. So it's, it's for them a tool to do that. But I think the most frequent use of that card is uh, to travel abroad. So when I go on holiday with my children, they also need some kind of an ID, and this kid's ID is a, is a very valid okay, uh, travel so document within the Schengen region, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, it sounds like your EID has been an evolving mechanism. I mean, from the beginnings where it's just an ID card to yeah. what, I mean, I would, today I guess you can open up all sorts of services for it. The main role of this card is to allow any Belgian citizen to knock at the door to say and prove who you are and to make sure that the door opens. It will not do anything more than that. So that on the card you will find nothing more than the basic minimum minimum to authenticate a citizen. Mm -hmm. And the rest we do online. That's our strategy. Which I was going to ask you about. You mentioned online with the children's, um, briefly with the children's ID. The online access or the logical access is provided directly to government services or public services through the EID? Is it, well, is it similar to the German card um, in that sense? Let me say what the, the reasoning was behind uh, the identity card. Uh, it's a, a tool we want to give to our c citizens so that they can better function in their environment, whether it is with relationship with government or whether it's relationship with industry. I mean, it's available for society, yeah. And I think who is best placed in Belgium to say that's a real Belgian citizen and that's not? I think it's government. It's his, it's yeah. his core product, yeah. So, uh, so we, we, we have put that service, let's say, on a cart, distributed it, and now everybody can function. We, we went even further in that reasoning in the sense that uh, we are not focusing so much on building applications. We are more focusing on building development tools so that anybody who would like to build an application can do that in the best possible ways. So we open that to the market. Of course, government builds its own applications and will use it in combination with EID. But we want as much the industry to take it up or whoever thinks there is a need to authenticate citizen or maybe they call them uh, customers. Yeah, which is why you sort of call it a, like a product. 
in that sense? It's a product or a service. I, a service I have a bit difficulty use. to, yeah, to find the reward. Yeah, exactly, it, but it's that. I consider it more as a service. Yeah, okay. Now, just take it a little, another step forward outside of Belgium. Yeah. Cross-border interoperability is something that is always talked about, whether yep. it's a, a shared shared border or something within the EU or a controlled yep. border or whatever. What is that? Is that an issue that you're looking at as We're well? We're fully involved in this. Not only because, well, we, we, we are a pretty small country. You drive one hour in any direction and you're Somewhere probably else. gonna cross <laughs> a border. Yeah. So, uh, but also, as we, we are in the center of Europe, we have quite a lot of foreigners visiting us. So interoperability is, is part of our life and society. Um, I'm sure you have heard about the European large-scale pilot called Stork. Yes, I have. Well, that's, that's the project uh, we are very much involved in. We think it's very useful and it's worth uh, to, to be part of it. So what it does is just interconnecting all the European ID systems, whether it's cards or not, uh, it's systems. Uh, actually, we built a layer on top of the existing national infrastructures and we try to make sure that we can recognize each other's citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a, a very useful uh, uh, goal, knowing that Europe is, uh, Europe is building its European single market, so it's taking away the borders and allowing Belgian citizens to walk around freely and do business wherever they want in Europe as if they were doing it in Belgium. Yeah, yeah. So you need to give them tools. Sure. Well, today we have Belgian tools. The only thing we have to do is to make sure that these Belgian tools are usable in other European countries yeah. and vice versa. And that's what An it does. An ID card for Europe has also been mooted, it's been talked about. Do you think that is something that might eventually Come the European pass? EU? The, EI, the EU EID. I don't think this will happen. Uh, personally, um, first of all, it's a bit against the European principle, which is by definition respecting uh, the individual sovereignty of every country. And from the start, even in the, the stork discussion, from the start, we were reminded of that aspect that it is not the ID to try and convince your neighbor of choosing your technology. Sure. It's more uh, an exercise of uh, agreeing on a common standard that allows the interoperability between whatever is there or will be there. And offering a platform. That and offering a platform, use. which has uh, one major goal, which is it has to be simple, easy to understand and secure. And so if you look now at what uh, the large scale pilot is producing, I think we got there. Uh, which is in a very easy way uh, try to uh, distinguish which country he is from and with which tool he wants to authenticate sure, himself. Sure. And then the only thing we do is we connect to that destination, ask that organization to authenticate th that citizen and to send me the result back. Great. So, uh, and technically it worked. I mean, we, surprisingly we, uh, we came to that solution pretty rapidly. I think now we are looking, now that we are going from a pilot to a real implementation, uh, we are confronted with some more complex uh, hurdles like uh, uh, a legal platform which is, uh, uh, well, acceptable by all sure. 28 uh, member states, for instance. And I suppose there's an element of privacy here as well. Privacy is an absolute must. Uh, I mean, if you're sharing, uh, yeah, you're crossing. Goes without saying. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we, we are sensitive to that kind of aspect, so we, we spend quite some time on it. Also the European Commission, we have in Belgium a very, very powerf well, powerful, important, let's say, uh, privacy commission, uh, who, who is the watchdog over sure. that aspect of sure. respect of privacy, yeah. so yeah. But then we've talked about the physical borders of countries, but then the, you've also got the online world, the digital world, which is yeah. almost borderless. So it's something yeah. that, again, I would imagine you need to think very well, uh, carefully about. Um, I think, for instance, a, a thing like Stork will be uh, much more efficient in the sure. online world. Yeah. Uh, in the offline world, it's just showing physically exactly, your ID yeah. and uh, sure. the officer will, will verify it. And, uh, yeah. 
and say yes or no. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, uh, yeah I think it's more meant for an online, uh, online environment, environment where we are more and more tending towards. Yeah, yeah. Good. Great. Well, thanks a lot for talking to me today. Thank you very much thanks. for having me.